Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and we've got another mini PC to take a look at today and this one is very mini. This is the T8 Plus from Ace Magician. This is a newer mini PC brand that I've just gotten familiar with and so far they're putting out some really nice little devices. This is running Windows 11 Pro. It's fully licensed and baked in and it's powered by an Intel N95 processor. This can work really well as a basic PC for doing Word documents and whatnot but it can also probably do pretty well as a little mini server. Install Linux and some Docker containers and off you go. You got dual gigabit ethernet in the back there as well. And we're gonna take a closer look at this little mini PC and what it can do in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from Ace Magician. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this little mini PC is all about. Now the price point on this comes in at around $199 typically, although at the moment there's a coupon on Amazon that brings the price down to $150, which I think is a pretty good deal. Now, as I mentioned, inside it has an Intel N95 processor. This is a lower end chip, so it's not gonna compete with a current regular PC, but it's more than capable of getting a lot of work done. It has a 15 watt TDP, in case you're wondering about that. It has eight gigabytes of RAM on board, but it's soldered on but they also have a 256 gigabyte NVMe that you can replace. And a little bit earlier, we did take it apart to see what was inside. So you can't get at the RAM, obviously, because that's soldered on, but you can remove that NVMe up there and replace it with another one. Below the NVMe is the Wi-Fi card, which also provides Bluetooth support to the device, and that is replaceable as well. It does not support Wi-Fi 6, just AC Wi-Fi at the moment, but it is more than capable, I think, for uh, the kinds of things that I think people might do with this device. There is a lot of ports on this, and you'll notice here on the left-hand side, there are three HDMI outputs. Each of these is capable of delivering 4K at 60 frames per second. So you can have three independent displays running at that resolution. Having three displays will tax it a little bit more than a single one will, but you can do it, and that's pretty neat. On the back here, you've got your gigabit ethernet, as I mentioned. Note that these are MediaTek-based ethernet adapters, not Intel, so that might limit its usefulness as a router if you're using PFSense or something, but I think there's a lot of things you can do with dual gigabit ethernet that go beyond routing. Got your power adapter here and a headphone microphone jack there along with a Kensington lock slot. And then you've got three USB 3 ports here on the side. There is no USB type C on this, unfortunately, um, but I think the connectivity is pretty good for the price point. Let's get this thing booted up and see how it performs. All right, so we've got this thing now booted up onto the Windows desktop. One thing you will note on it is that because the ports are located on each side, you're gonna have cables plugged in all over the place. One thing it does support here on the bottom is a Visa mount, which you'll find in the box. So you can attach this to the back of a monitor, which might look a little cleaner than our current setup here. Now we are in Windows 11, of course, as I mentioned, it is running Windows 11 Pro. And a little earlier, I did operate it headless where I could boot it up and connect to it over remote desktop without having to have a monitor attached. But let's start off with something simpler here. We're gonna load up Microsoft Word and we'll see how fast everything loads up. As you can see, it springs to life very quickly here. We can jump into my Word document and start editing things here as well. And the display is currently set to 4K60, so it's really snappy for running at this resolution and frame rate. So you're gonna feel uh, definitely a good amount of performance here. And if all you're doing is this kind of stuff or maybe loading up a web browser and just pulling up websites during the day, even doing Google Docs and stuff, I think you're going to find this to be actually surprisingly adequate for most basic tasks here. As you can see, these websites are springing to life here pretty quickly, more so than I've seen on some of these lower end mini PCs in the past here. So all in, a very nice experience for doing the basics that you might do day to day. So you can equip an office with these things and I think people might actually get some productive use out of them. Now a little bit earlier, I loaded up my YouTube channel and put up a 4K60 video. And although it did drop a bunch of frames when it got started, once the on-screen overlays disappeared, it was able to play back this 4K video without dropping any additional frames. So I think it will work well for media playback and 
uh, Netflix and Amazon Prime Video and all of those other services. One thing I do not recommend at the moment is using a Windows Mini PC as a home theater device, primarily because the HDR stuff doesn't work as well on these mini PCs as it does on a dedicated TV streaming box. But if you know what you're getting into, I think this will, I think, play back 1080p video and 4K video without issues on a larger display. And of course, you can download all of the Netflix and Amazon apps from the Windows Store and get a pretty good experience on this little device. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test running in Google Chrome, we got a score of 142, which is much better than some of the prior generation low-end Intel chips we've looked at on other mini PCs in the recent past here. But note the score on another ace magician that we looked at a few weeks ago, the AM06 Pro. That is running with a Ryzen 5800U processor, which is much more powerful in comparison. And what I'm seeing right now is a bunch of these Ryzen mini PCs kind of flooding the market. There must be some excess parts out there in the marketplace. And so if you can get one of those AMD Ryzen-based machines for around the price of this one, I would go with that because those will be considerably more powerful. But nonetheless, I'm pretty impressed with the performance that we're seeing out of this little box doing the basics. So let's take a look at some games here. And of course, the question always comes up, can it run Crisis? Well, the answer is yes, sorta. This is Crisis running at 720p at the lowest settings. And this is the 2007 version of the game, the original here. And as you can see, we were doing really well walking in the other direction, but now that we're walking towards a more intense portion of the map here, things are starting to slow down quite a bit. It is still playable. There are a couple of lag hits here and there. And I think the best you'll get out of this is around 30 frames per second. Uh, when you are in a more intense area of the game here. But still pretty playable, um, but not an ideal playing experience, I think, on this one. But Half-Life 2 from the same era actually runs really well. And we were able to get 30 frames per second out of Half-Life 2 running at 4K, believe it or not. So some games will run a little better than others, but you're not going to run any current games on this. We did try No Man's Sky. And here we were running it at 720p at the lowest settings and getting about 15 frames per second with huge lag hits as we were running around the world here. So don't expect much out of this device for current games, although some of those Ryzen machines I talked about can actually play a lot of modern games at decent frame rates, including Red Dead Redemption 2. So if you're looking for a fun, cheap gaming device, a Ryzen-based one is probably where you want to go on this. But I did find it did very well at emulation, even some of the more advanced emulators. This is the Dolphin emulator running Burnout 2, and we were able to run the game at the full frame rate. I don't think all of the GameCube library is going to run this well, but a lot of the more basic games like this one, I think, will do quite well on this little piece of hardware. And then, of course, all of the older games out there from the 80s and 90s, like the PlayStation 1, and of course, all the 16-bit consoles should perform quite nicely on this little box. But these little mini PCs excel at game streaming, and this one does exceptionally well. So right now, we're running that same game we attempted to run before, No Man's Sky, but now we're running it on the GeForce Now service in the cloud using NVIDIA's servers and we're getting a 4K60 stream here working perfectly. It almost feels native on the device here. It's very responsive. Uh, we're looking at about 50 or so megabits per second coming downstream right now from the servers. But this game looks and plays great on this little PC. And you don't need to subscribe to a service to get this level of performance. You can use an in-home game streaming app to do the same thing. It's even built into Steam. So if you wanted to kind of have something on your television to play some of these games at their full resolution, uh, you can do it here, and these games are going to look and play great, even on this little low-cost PC. Now, I do want to disclose that NVIDIA has provided the channel with a free subscription to GeForce Now Ultimate that we use for game streaming testing here on the channel, and I want to thank them for that. Let's take a look now at a benchmark, the 3D Mark Time Spy test. There we got a score of 348. And again, you can see just how much more powerful those little Ryzen mini PCs can be. But it's still doing better than some of the prior generation Intel machines. But again, not something that I'm going to recommend for gamers. But it does do a pretty good job of keeping itself cool. As you can see, it's got an air intake here at the bottom and it exhausts out the back. The cooling system looks pretty adequate to me, actually, at least for a mini PC. 
The fan is not noisy at all. You barely hear it even when it's under heavy load. When I was running the 3D Mark stress test, I was surprised that I didn't hear the fan blowing as hard as I expected it to, but it passed the test with a score of 99.5%, and you can see what the temperature was on the machine when that test was running. So altogether, I think this is a nicely performing mini PC provided you keep your expectations in check. All right, one last thing to take a look at here, and that is its Linux compatibility. We've got Ubuntu 23.04 running. All of the hardware was detected successfully. I'm running at 4K60. Audio is working just fine. As you can see, the performance here feels pretty snappy about what it feels like on the Windows side. So if you were looking to get a little secondary PC for messing around with Linux as a desktop, this is a great solution for that. You got eight gigabytes of RAM on board and you also have a quad core processor in that N95. So I think it would do well for running web applications kind of in a home lab environment where you've got a bunch of Docker containers running or something. I think you've got plenty of processing horsepower and RAM to serve you and maybe a handful of users. This would also work well as a Plex server because it does support Intel QuickSync. So there's just so many little projects you can do with one of these things. And I think if you were looking for something capable and inexpensive, uh, this one certainly fits the bill. You will have wires hanging all over it, but I do like the performance for the price point here. But if you are out shopping, I would look and see what some of the Ryzen mini PCs cost because they may not be all that much more expensive and you'll get significantly better performance. But if you're looking for something small and inexpensive but capable, this is something worth considering. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and I'm the Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.